Whoa! This is separate. But it says to be continued. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> I love how it's actually an escape thing. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so I guess this is gonna be the finale place. We're waking in the oh. infirmary. Looks like you're awake. Hey. <laughs> Is this the infirmary? Why are we here? Do you know what happened at the AB gate? Kay and I went back to the infirmary, but... We waited and waited, and the two of you never returned. So we went to the warehouse to check on you. We found you passed out in front of the AB rooms. Kay and I hurried back here with you. I looked over at Phi. Do you remember what happened just now? You mean what happened a long time ago? Yeah, you got him pretty good, huh? Huh. <laughs> Yeah, I remember all right. <laughs> hey, what are you guys talking about? What Cork. am I? Top liver? <laughs> Back uh. among the conscious and not psychotic, huh? Yeah, thanks. Grandpa told me what you did. Thanks for finding the medicine for us. No problem, all in a day's work. Although I wouldn't mind a little swimsuit action. Really grabbing at straws here, aren't you? <laughs> hey, I wasn't talking to Quark. That was an offer for Alice. Not really my point. Oh, whatever. Forget about that. Now that you guys are awake, all we gotta do is open the number nine door. What are you talking about? Look at your bracelet. It says 10. I have 10 BP. I've got 15 BP. That means I got six more points while I was out. But how? You've been asleep for more than two hours. We've played the AB game three times. Wow. Yes, of course, the color and group assignments were shuffled around each time. But no matter who voted, everyone chose Ally. Yay. And now all of us have enough to leave. We can't leave just yet. I was stunned. How did everyone cooperate long enough to raise all of our BP past 9? Was it because Akane hadn't been killed? Without a death to start things off, maybe we'd been less suspicious of one another. Or could the bombs have had something to do with it? We'd all joined forces against Deer and Fire and I had, had been able to disarm them all. All of us had ran together against a common enemy and overcome a tremendous threat. Perhaps that had strengthened our bond. Which I had to admit would be somewhat ironic. After all, Deer planted the bombs that forced us all to work against him. This must have been what Akane was talking about. Haven't I told you death was unavoidable? Sacrifices had to be made for the sake of the project. Come on, let's open the door and get out of here! Wait. What about him? After some discussion, we decided to leave Deer behind. Alice was the only holdout. She complained about wanting to take him back to her superiors. But after I mentioned they'd come back to investigate after we escaped and deal with Deer then, she reluctantly complied. Alright, let's get going. I don't think we should be leaving. Everybody ready? I'm gonna open it. Yes, just get on with it. Everyone else swallowed and nodded. I grabbed the lever and pulled it down. Alright, the door is opening. The number nine door has, has been opened. opened. It will re. All right, everybody, let's move. All right, I'm um, sorry about that. I had to cut some bits out because my family was talking a lot. Um, I didn't need to tell them twice. The room inside was clearly a loading elevator. It looked sort of like a large plate on top of a huge pedestal. We ran to the center of the plate and turned around. The number nine door stood wide open. Two, one, 
Zero. The number nine door is closing. I wonder if, since we're all getting out, will we finally get an answer of where we are? Because I believe we're on the moon. The this thing as the. There we go. Oh, everyone isn't on that. Oh no, we got left behind. <laughs> Where's this door lead, I wonder? Looks like we did it. Yes, we should keep moving. Yep. Beyond the door was a wide hallway that ended in a very solid wall. To the left, we found a very familiar looking door. We pushed it open and went in. Yep, the peck room or peck two. There's a lot of suits here. The pressure exchange chamber. You know what this place is? Yeah, sort of. This whole facility is pressurized, apparently. I think the idea is to keep the air outside and cons consequently the virus from getting inside. That meant that if we want to go out, we have to decompress so we match the outside air pressure. The room here is where you prepare for going into the actual pressure exchange room. You see all those suits along the wall? I figure we need to put those on and head to the decompression room downstairs. Whoa! Hold on a minute! You're saying the air outside is full of that horrible virus? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Of course, according to Akani, we we're already infected with Radical 6, so the whole room seemed a little pointless. Why? How did all this happen? Did... did they... No, that's not possible. We've come this far. We can't... Let's go outside. There's no way to know what's really going on. We can't go outside. I'm kidding. There's no way to know what's... Yeah, sorry. All right. No one else objected. We all turned the protective suits to head downstairs to the decompression room. Let's do it. God damn it, my parents keep on yelling. Anyway. As soon as we were all outside, the process began. Though it may, my helmet could hear the soft hiss of air being sucked out of the room. Um, through my helmet, okay, okay. We stood there for several minutes waiting for the pressure to finish. Or something, I don't know what it said actually. I think it said pressure. At last the dinner, we heard the door begin to open. Boomba, we can get out now. Oh my god, that door looks so fake and it doesn't actually let us see outside in this image. I wonder if this is a gay. <laughs> Beyond it was another decompression chamber. We repeated the process two more times before we reached the final door and opened it. We're outside now. The dead bleak landscape wasn't a surprise for me. I'd seen it before in another timeline. The others hadn't, however, and although I couldn't see their faces through the visors of the helmets, I heard more than a few gasps over the radio. For a few long moments, we just stood there astonished. Where the hell are we? The desert, I guess? I figured that out. I mean, which one? I don't know, but I think I know what day it is. Hmm? Look at the moon. It's red, right? That means today's the total lunar eclipse. So? Remember the astronomy magazine in the lounge? Well, the next eclipse like this was going to be on December 31st, 2028. So... Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Are you suggesting we were sleeping for a week after we were abducted? I think so. However, we were... When it, wherever we were, must have been far away from any city. The air was cleaner than I'd ever seen it. And the stars, the sky was full of them. More stars than I'd ever seen in my life. I could even spot the hazy arm of the Milky Way. But the most striking feature was the moon. It was blood red and massive. Much bigger, in fact, than I remembered it being. Then as I watched, a black spot began to move across the surface. It was hard to see details, but it looked circular. 
The spot continued to move across the moon, heading for the right edge. Uh, what's that? The moon. Well, the moon's shadow, actually. Oh, Tamiyoji knows! The moon's shadow? I frowned. That didn't make any sense. Zero told me to stay quiet. I think he was worried I'd spill the beans on his operation. He said if I didn't tow the line, he wouldn't just kill me. He'd kill Quark, too. Oh, we're finally gonna get some information. Thank you, Junpei. And I agreed, like an idiot, and brought Quark with me. Just... just so I could see her. <laughs> Such an idiot. Don't worry. I'm sure I do the same. So, that being the case, might as well start with this. Where are we? I what I said before. That up there is the moon's shadow. What the hell are you saying? Think about it. If that's the moon's shadow... Then what's it falling on? That's... Earth? Yeah. It's not the red moon you get from a lunar eclipse. And again, this isn't a lunar eclipse. It's a solar eclipse. Anybody in the black spot down there is looking up at the moon, covering the sun. What? No way. If that's the Earth, then what the hell are we? The moon, of course. This is the lunar surface. We were just inside a moon base. How can you be no so calm way. about that? No, you've got to be lying. How do you expect us to believe that? This can't be the moon. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Besides, if this was the moon, how do you explain the gravity? The moon only has one sixth of the Earth's gravity. So what's this? She picked up a rock and dropped it. See? That looked perfectly normal. Yes, it looked that way. Luna? Yeah. Um, they're probably going to explain this, but Radical 6 lowers your mind speed to a 6. A, ro six, a root of 6. Which means we're seeing everything normal only because of Radical 6. You were right about the gravity in a way. I was one of the people who knew this wasn't Earth. Well, I suppose I'm not people, if we're being honest, but... Excuse me? Please, just listen. Alice, you were infected with Radical 6. Then we gave you the Accelivere, which cured you. The Radical 6 isn't completely gone, though. Some of its symptoms stick around for a while. What symptoms? Um, well, Radical 6 can slow down your brain's processing speed by the root of 1 sixth. It can take a while for your brain to get back up to speed. Every one of us has been infected. In other words, all of our brains have been processing information at a much lower speed. If you evaluated the root of 1 sixth, you'll get a number close to 0 0.408. That means our brains are running at something slightly less than half speed. As you said before, the moon's gravity is about 1 sixth that of Earth's. The time that it takes for an object to fall is inversely proportional to the square root of the gravitational acceleration. Since the gravity is lower on the moon, that means the time increases. I guess that's a little technical. Let me give you an example. Say you drop an apple from a height of 4.9 meters. It will take approximately one second to hit the ground. On the moon, however, that time would be one second times root six, which would be approximately 2.45 seconds. I used 4.9 meters because it matches up with the acceleration of gravity nicely, but it could be anything. The gravity constant is, well, Constant. You could drop something from 10 centimeters or 10 meters and it would be the same. Does that make sense? So, now we've established that on the moon, things fall root 6 times slower than they do on Earth. That being the case, what would happen if someone's brain slowed down by root 1 6? To them, 2.45 seconds would feel like 1 second. 4.9 seconds would feel like 2. But it's not hypothetical. That's what's been happening to every one of us. Wait, you're saying that's the reason we didn't notice the weaker gravity? Are you sure you didn't notice anything? Think back. Huh? You and Sigmund Phi said something about it in the lounge. About how you felt weird. It's kind of like my body isn't really mine. I'm sort of floating. Like that. It seemed insane, but what Luna said made sense. Oh, I mean, it doesn't. I'll explain why later. In fact, it explained Fi's apparently superhuman strength quite well. And deer? Yep. <laughs> Wait, this is crazy. That can't possibly. 
possibly be Earth out there. Look at it. I've seen photos of Earth, and it's blue and green and beautiful. That thing is just red. Uh, before we get into that, I should probably tell you something. This isn't New Year's Eve in 2028. Today is January 27th. <laughs> no. 29? Don't tell me. 30? Still no. Then just what year is this? It's 74. Ooh -hoo! Whoa! That's insane. That would mean we were abducted more than 45 years ago. I don't blame you if you don't believe me, but it's the truth. How can you be sure? It's not that hard. Quark and I left Earth on January 23rd, 2074. Solar eclipses are easy to predict. We've known that there'd be one on the 27th for a long time. That's just science. Nobody can change that. But why is the Earth red? That's a long story. About 45 years ago, on April 13th, 2029, there were 18 annihilation reactors operating in various parts of the world. On the 13th, all 18 of them went up, all at the same time. The explosion was about 180,000 times as powerful as the atom bomb they dropped on Hiroshima. What? Why? I suppose it started a few months before that. The government had a test site for a future Mars mission out in the middle of Nevada. On December 31st, 2028, there was an accident. Well, accident doesn't quite convey the right sense of the thing. And the point is, Radical Six claimed its first victims there, then escaped. Didn't take long for it to spread to the rest of the world. Like Luna explained, the virus slows your brain down, but eventually, it also makes you kill yourself. Sadly. Pretty soon, the bodies started to pile up. Some people would take a dive off a building or shoot themselves in the head. You know, the classics. <laughs> but for some, it was poison or fire or asphyxiation or the noose. Plenty of people jumped in front of trains or cars. One pilot on a passenger airline drove his plane into the ground. Whoa. Most forms of transportation ground to a halt pretty fast. That meant food couldn't get distributed. And thousands of people who weren't even infected died from starvation. Everywhere you went, there were just piles of corpses covered in flies and rats. And didn't crows. didn't Temiurgy mention how only one third of the population died from Radical Six? Two thirds were based on the symptoms and the effects of what the Radical Six people did. I don't know what hell's like, but I imagine it's a lot like that. <laughs> I love how it went right after that. People who managed to avoid getting infected started trying to get in touch with one another. They got a hold of some radios and organized a couple meetings. There was only one thing to discuss, of course. How could they get rid of Radical Six? The answer, they decided, was purification. They figured they could just roast the surface of the Earth and that it killed the virus off for good. On April 13th in 2029, they put their plan into effect. That plan was to detonate all 18 annihilation reactors. Boom. Now the truth is, that's mostly just rumor. Nobody really knows what happened. But I've got my own theories. I think that the bombers had already been infected. And when they died, they took billions with them. The ultimate, if I die, you're coming with me gesture, I suppose. <laughs> I'd bet you money they'd all lost it long before they got to the reactors. Killing most of the world, no matter how bad things had gotten, was not a sane plan, even if it wasn't directly responsible. Radical Six killed most of the people on Earth. Anyway, why it happened isn't that important. Point is, it happened. You ever heard of Nuclear Winter? Basically what we got. The explosion threw a ton of crap up into the stratosphere. We're joined up with smoke and ash from all the fires. It blotted out the sun for seven years. Plants withered and animals died by the millions. A few humans who were left banded together to survive. There were rough times. Eventually they were over though. The sky cleared and the sun came back. Plants started blooming again. And the animals that hadn't died out completely began to reappear. Things weren't quite back to normal though. It's been 45 years now, but there's still quite a bit of dust and ash in the air. That's what you're seeing. You know why a sunset's red? Well, this is the same thing. 
Blue and green light have short wavelengths, and they scatter when they run into debris in the air. Red light, on the other hand, has a longer wavelength, which means it'll get a lot farther when the air's dirty. So there you are. The Earth looks red because that's the only color of light that can make it through the atmosphere. Because of the pollution in the sky. I was speechless. What could I possibly say? There was no reason for Temiogi to lie to us. So we're all standing on the moon. Looking at Earth. It was 2074. But why? Why were we here? Why were we then? I was so lost in thought I barely noticed Fi's approach. Hey Sigma, I think I figured something out. A whisper... Window popped up on the side of my helmet with a whisper in the corner. She seemed to be using a circuit only we could hear. Yeah? What is it? I figured out why there's an extra E. An extra E? Or a ninth? Oh, you mean the graffiti? Yeah, the one... I think it's an anagram. Just like on floor A. What does it mean? What's Anna say this God time? God damn it, Sigma! Huh? Knock it off! <laughs> Memento Mori, if the ninth lion ate the sun. If you rearrange the letters, you get the man on the moon rules the infinite time. Oh! See? Took us whole game just to get it. You need six E's to get that. So they stuck an extra one in ninth. The moon the man on the moon rules the infinite time. I think it's a message for us from Zero Senior and Akane. Remember what she was telling us? We created Project for one purpose to transport the consciousnesses of two people into the past. Those two people are you, Sigma, and you, Vi. So, uh, what are you getting at? Oh my god, you're slow. You don't get it? They're saying we rule the infinite time. Infinite time. They weren't just talking about having us jump a couple hours. I think they're planning to send us back. Way back. I think, yeah, you're probably right. If anything, we might be sent back to an earlier time to stop Radical 6. I mean, 2028, maybe. Wait a minute. Are you saying you think they're going to send us back 45 years? Yeah. So the ultimate purpose of the AB project is to send us back in time to the c catastrophe Temiogi was talking about? I think so. That doesn't make sense, though. I mean, we came from that same time period before it actually... So, why bring us here, then send us back? Well, Akane should be able to tell us the rest. Let's go pay her a visit. Do you know where she is? I've got an idea. Come on, think. Remember what she said when she gave you the key? To free? Yeah, I know. The grave. The one in the garden. Well, come on, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Can we actually get back? But the door's locked. We turn and ran back into the pressure exchange chamber, the others following close behind. <sighs> what? What are you doing? Did you forget something? We're gonna go talk to someone. <sighs> oh. You really need me to spell it out? The person behind it. this. What? I think that is yes. Let me accompany you then. Wait, why do you know about Akane? I'll tell you when we get there. Now, if you please. <laughs> yep. I'm going to then. So am I. Hey, um, is this Akane you're talking about? Yeah, you know her real well. Wait, you, you're not, you're serious? What the <laughs> hell is going on? <laughs> I forgot he hasn't told her. Just shut up, come on. Come if you want to, we don't need to do roll calls. Once we get here, Akane can explain everything. With that, we headed back through the airlock. How do we get back in, though? Oh, it's opening! Clever. The 
number nine door on floor A is shut forever once the game ends. Assuming Zero Jr. was telling the truth, of course. But the door on floor B... Oh! Yeah. Thought we might be able to take the lift to it. And it looks like I was right. Any idea cool. where Connie might be? Yeah, the grave. You mean the grave in the garden? Yep, don't worry. I don't think she's buried there or anything. Chances are she's alive. Just in the grave. Anyway, let's move to the garden. Well, anyway, once this animation finishes... The bee garden. Come on, get to a point where they speak. Is... is Akane really under here? Alright, so... I am going to pause the video here. I am going to... when I start again, I'm going to go back to before they go into the door. But it's late, and I need to get some sleep. So... <laughs> bad time to cut it off, honestly. But next time will be the finale, I'm sure of it. So otherwise, I hope you guys have been enjoying this so far. We finally got out, but now we have to talk to Akane. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.